Good morning, everybody. My name is Alyssa Cooper. This is Cooking in Quarantine, and I am so happy to be back. I know that when I was last here, I made some suggestion that I would be taking Cooking in Quarantine on the road. Um, that was literally my eyes being bigger than my stomach. We simply could not get it together. Um, you've heard me say that I regularly feel like I do like nine union jobs before noon in the morning getting set up to do this. Well, I was sleeping till noon and I don't know if you're aware, but last Tuesday was election day. Last Wednesday was election day. Last Thursday was election day and last Friday was election day. And when finally the day after election day came on Saturday, I realized that I had been holding so much anxiety I cried, I drank a few glasses of champagne, and I passed out for like four hours. I never nap, never, never, never nap. So anyway, um, it's been for me, I don't think that, hello Caroline, I don't think that any of you who have watched me regularly these past nine months, I don't think it's possible that my politics are in any way a question mark for you. So a girl in my Pilates class named Alyssa made this cute little Biden-Harris, and I just want to say, girls, we're going to have a woman in the White House. We're going to have a woman vice president. Your daughters have an amazing example that we didn't have when I was a little girl. I was the first year of kid to go to school where little girls didn't have to wear dresses, where we were allowed to wear trousers. Think about that. Look how young and beautiful I am. That was a very short time ago, y'all. And may I say thank you to Ruth for all the work that she's done to make these kinds of things possible. So um, a couple of things I'm going to say. Um, I don't know if I mentioned I'm having all of the fillings in my teeth replaced here in like an hour. And so cooking today didn't seem to be a really smart thing to do because why would I start something if I couldn't finish it, right? So um, I do have though a whole lot of plans. Um, this is a big nod to my neighbor, Tom, um, that he's like, you know, your soups, your soups are so good and this is soup season. And then shortly before I left, um, my neighbor gave me a bunch of stuff. She had had some finger surgery and she brought me some stuff and said, if you'll use this, could you share your food with us? So I said, but I'm leaving town. I have to make it right away. So I made a ton of soup for them and I kept getting texts while I was away saying, oh my goodness, your soup is so good. And so Tom said, why don't you sell your soup to the neighbors? And I said, why don't I sell my soup to the neighbors? So, Actually, New Yorkers, if you want, you can bid on my soup. You can say, hey, I'd like to buy your soup. But more importantly, I realized that Thanksgiving is coming up and I can make a ton of soup. I can get out the lobster pot and I can make gallons of soup at a time. So in the next couple of days, I'm gonna decide on maybe three soups that I'll make that will be able to freeze and hold so that if you wanted to pick them up, say on a Monday before Thanksgiving for me, you could pick them up frozen here, transport them safely to your Upper East or, I'm sorry, Upper West or Upper East Side home and have them thought out in time for the holidays. Just a little thought, boys and girls, because my soups are good. So anyway, I today when I went shopping, because I hadn't been shopping since I had been back, I got a few things, so I'm going to give you an idea of what I'm going to do tomorrow. So the idea for the next several weeks is going to be soups, chilies, and stews. And as a part of that, I'm going to take the opportunity to master all the mother sauces. So last in the last week or two, I made that wonderful potato soup, and it was so good that I felt bad about taking it to my friend because her daughter is gluten-free. So I learned how to make gluten-free bechamel and I made another batch of it gluten-free. So that was, that was one thing. And then I was thinking yesterday, somebody was saying, 
how wouldn't it be great if you could make a batch of something but turn it into lots of different things and I thought well we could make a really nice wintry uh, chicken soup and divide it eat half of it as chicken soup add a little bechamel to it put it into a pie crust and suddenly you've got a chicken pot pie tomorrow though I'm gonna use what is one of my favorite things and I think one of the most undersung roots out there and that is fennel so when we get started tomorrow I'm gonna have roasted cubes of sweet potato and roasted fennel ready to go with mirepoix into the stock pot and my nice hearty vegetable broth um, and we're gonna make this a beautiful pureed soup and I'm gonna test this and see if it really does freeze as nicely as I think it would. If you remember from back last winter or last spring, I made my friend Julie's amazing carrot jalapeno soup. That stuff is in my running. The potato soup is in the running. I made um, Ina Garten's, um, not acorn squash, butternut squash soup the other day, and I did not like it at all. So I've been thinking about it a lot and thinking about what I think is missing. And I would have done that today or tomorrow, but I realize I have to take my knives to get sharpened before I get frisky with an acorn squash again anytime soon. So anyway, that's gonna be my idea. And so I realize that I get to make my own tomato sauce to, we can make a tomato sauce for making certain kinds of chilies and certain kinds of stews. I'm gonna make a beef bourguignon. I'm gonna probably make, I'm actually probably gonna make uh, Julie Child's beef bourguignon. Um, we can, I'm looking around here. So there's so many exciting things to make. So if you would like to be fed by your Auntie Alyssa, just text me and tell me what you want. And I really am, I'm gonna make out a list um, and sort of plan out so that I can put online what is going to happen over the next few days, the next few weeks. So if you really do, really guys, it's hard for me. There is so much food. It's not easy to make enough food for just one or two people and nobody likes to eat the same thing day after day after day. So that's my story for today, I think. Uh, we're going to do soup stews and mother sauces. I'm going to make this wonderful roasted fennel and sweet potato soup tomorrow. I think it's going to be great. I have no recipe. These are just two of my favorite things, and I think it's going to work out just fine. Um, and then I'm thinking that what that butternut squash really needed was roasted garlic cloves, and it needed something, and I think the answer is star anise. So I'm gonna try that out in the next few days. Who knows what all we're gonna try, but I'm gonna to try to do stuff off the top of my head. I was talking to somebody earlier who says that a parent is seeming to be a little uh, depressed. And, um, and I said, well, of course, you know, if, you're, if you were, um, at least I can pretend to work and do some things. And, uh, but if I were retired and I couldn't travel because you know, I feel for my parents. That's what they planned to do with their retirement was travel. And they've had to cancel at least two or three trips that they normally would do. So I get that. So remember, of course, that the whole point of cooking and quarantine is to take care of your mind and your heart and those kinds of things that if you aren't mentally healthy, you're not going to be physically healthy. I saw, as I was walking home from Pilates on Sunday morning, there's a, a, a new bagel shop that has opened on the corner. Oops, I forgot to mute my phone. There's a new bagel shop that has opened on the, okay, where's the phone? I can hear it, I can't see it. Okay, thank you for that. There's a new bagel shop that's open. And it says, you can't be bitter and expect to have a sweet life. 
and I thought, oh, I literally I stopped and took a picture of it because I thought it was so meaningful. So anyway, take care of your mind so that your heart is happy and pure and in a place that your body can be healthy so that you're motivated to make delicious healthy food for yourself and not run out to the deli or worse you guys know famously i stopped eating all commercial fast food the day i moved to new york so i'm well over 30 years since i have even been inside a mcdonald's so try to stay away from that and i know that people need jobs and all that kind of stuff that you need to be healthy. I saw this morning the head of Biden's task force on getting the coronavirus under control says that it's going to be at least April before people at high risk and first responders are fully inoculated so that we can know for sure that this Pfizer vaccine works well and is ready for the rest of us. So for those of us who are healthy, there's 370 million of us, for goodness sakes. It's going to take a very long time to get those, what, let me do the math, 600, 740 million doses given to all of us. So be respectful. Take care of your mind, your heart, your body. Take care of your friends. Take care of your neighbors. Stay strong physically and mentally cry when you need to, run when you have to, but take care of yourself so that we can get through these next six months and get to a place where we can start to be normal again. Don't be fools on Thanksgiving. Dr. Fauci said that his family isn't going to celebrate Thanksgiving together. Don't close the doors and the windows and turn on the forced air heat and have everybody take their masks off. That is the definition of a super spreader event. So bear with us, boys and girls. This is almost over, but thank goodness, looks like we're gonna have a House, a Senate, and a White House who are gonna look forward to taking care of you and making sure that you don't lose your home, that you don't lose your income, and that you don't lose the food on your table. So guys, I feel very blessed today. I feel lighter and happier than I felt in a very long time. I know not all of you feel that way. That's why, like Dave Chappelle said, remember how bad it hurt four years ago for those of us who were unfortunate enough to live in the same town with the current president and to know truly who he is. Um, but so for those of us who know those things, I can't express the enormous sense of ease that I have not felt in a very long time. So my love to those of you who feel hurt, but I promise you, no Democrat ever wants to hurt anybody. That is simply not a part of our platform. We just want to share with our brown neighbors and our gay neighbors. That's all not just our white Christian neighbors. We actually think that Catholics are people too and that atheists can be decent people. That's the only place that we differ, guys. So I want to take care of you by helping you take care of you. Guys, I love you all so much. You give me a reason to get up and get dressed in the morning. Otherwise, I'd still be in my sweaty Pilates clothes. So I'm not sure what time it is, but I've prattled on long enough. I need to go and get some shoes on so that I leave early enough that I can walk to the dentist's office and get another couple miles in on my pedometer today. Part of my way of staying healthy, happy, strong, fit, and eh, out of the medical uh, situation. But um, uh, we'll all stay as healthy as we can. So, guys. thanks for coming. And we're going to make some delicious soup tomorrow. And I'll see you same bat time, same bat channel. Bye, guys. And thank you guys for all. Thanks, Jules. And, oh, guys, thank you guys all for coming by. Ciao.